From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. President Trump will be addressing Congress at the State of the Union address the day before they cast their final votes in the impeachment trial. We'll have the very latest from D.C. Plus, an inside look at presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg's campaign push right here in Arizona. In tackling gun violence with Wi-Fi, the new device a Tucson man created to stop accidental shootings. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Sean Rice. And I'm Stephanie Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us. The impeachment trial is expected to come to an end tomorrow when the Senate votes to either acquit President Trump or impeach him. But before they vote, Trump will address a joint Congress in his State of the Union address. From our D.C. Bureau, Gabriela Kalaj tells us what we can expect. The president's third State of the Union address is set to start here in the Capitol just after 7 p.m. Arizona time. It comes just one day before the Senate will give its final verdict on impeachment. So it'll be interesting to see how prevalent that topic will be tonight. President Donald Trump's address comes in the chamber where House members approved articles of impeachment less than two months ago. The impeachment trial moved to the Senate, which heard closing arguments when Trump tweeted that he hopes the American people see the process as a hoax. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will be sitting right behind the president with whom she has not spoken since October, her spokesman says. Arizona Senator Martha McSally said she expects members of both parties to vote for acquittal. Scheduled in the Senate. So has anything changed or will it? Senator Martha McSally has been through it all, forced to sit through it all over the last few weeks, joins us now. Senator, what do you expect tomorrow? We know it's going to be an acquittal. Yeah. Do you think that there are any Republicans that will not vote for acquittal? I, I don't think so. Uh, if you think about this, this is about taking the president out of office, decapitating the government, government and then taking him off the ballot so that the voters don't get to decide who the president is. So that's a very high bar. I would expect Republicans uh, to vote to acquit. I would expect some Democrats to as well. If they look at their constitutional responsibilities here, not whether the House, when you get through all their bluster and all their hyperbole, uh, if there was any there there, the question is, even if everything they say is accurate, which it's not, does that rise to the level of removing the president from office? Mm -hmm. While the voters started voting last night, evidently in Iowa, even though we don't have the results. The White House is promising an upbeat address, but some wonder if Trump can keep on script given the timing of the speech. After Trump gives his speech, two Democrats will give a response in both English and Spanish. Tomorrow, the Senate will vote for the final time to impeach President Trump. Based on previous votes, it is expected the president will be acquitted. Live in Washington, Gabriela Collage, Cronkite News. Confusion continues as voters and candidates are still waiting for the outcome of the Iowa caucus after delays in the new recording system. Initial data released by the Iowa Democratic Party shows Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders ahead in the state's first in the nation pres presidential caucuses. The party released 62% of the results from all 99 counties. After day-long delays spark sparked by technical problems, it's unclear when the remaining results will be released by the party, which says it is still verifying data from the caucuses across the state. Michael Bloomberg opened his Arizona campaign office over the weekend. He talked to voters about issues he plans to tackle if elected, and he touched on many important topics, including gun safety laws, health insurance, climate change, and immigration issues. Cronkite News reporter Delaney White has more about the event. Delaney? Bloomberg supporters packed the downtown venue on Saturday night to hear more about what his campaign entails. News is I'll also be spending a lot of time here because the road to the White House runs right through Arizona. Michael Bloomberg's supporters came from across the valley to hear his policies on issues for the 2020 election season. Getting it done means addressing discrimination and inequality. Shadows. 
Bloomberg says slogan, Mike will get it done, means he will provide health insurance to every American who lacks it, pass gun safety laws, and tackle immigration issues. These are just a few of his goals. Having been undocumented and coming to this country when I was three years old, his immigration reform plan is the one that is near and dear to my heart. State Representative Cesar Chavez officially endorsed Bloomberg. He says it is because he feels his message resounds in the state of Arizona as well as the rest of the United States. You know, anybody who's going to come into the state of Arizona and provide a clear path to victory by investment, by commitment, and ensuring that the people of the state of Arizona are being heard, no other presidential candidate has come to Arizona and has made such an impact like Mike Bloomberg. That is why I'm here, and that is why I've endorsed Mike. Tonight, Bloomberg's campaign will be talking about gun safety at the Arizona State Capitol. In the studio, Delaney White, Cronkite News. A Tucson man is tired of seeing gun violence in the U.S. and around the world, so he decided to do something about it. So he created a firearm safety kit that includes an aftermarket part that's installed in a gun. The gun with the part installed is hooked up to a base, which is connected to Wi-Fi. You can use a cell phone or computer to arm an alarm. When the gun is moved an inch from the base, the alarm will sound, warning anyone in the house that the gun has been moved. If the gun owner is not home, the system will send a text message or call the owner, alerting them the gun has been taken from the base. The system also locks the gun so it can't be fired. And we want to shrink that footprint. We want to be able to save lives due to accidental, isolated, or mass shootings. For now, this is still a prototype, but the inventor hopes to get the system on the market by the end of the year. One Arizona representative wants to address a problem that students face with school resource officer, uh, officers. Now, officers are getting training on how to effectively deal with mental, mental health problems when it comes to the students. Cronkite News reporter Peter Gong takes a look on how it is helping officers. I was in a situation where I was attacked by two adult women from the high school. And the officer, instead of intervening and helping me, ended up actually attacking me. That high school experience had a lasting impact on Representative Alma Hernandez, and it led Governor Doug Ducey to implement measures to prevent incidents like this one from happening by providing more training. The class is called Adolescent Mental Health, and it's 12 additional hours of training for school resource officers. Most already take a 40-hour basic class. Um, but this class is, is it kind of builds along, it builds upon that. Officers recently went through a two-day training session at the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. They learned tactics to help de-escalate situations when a student's encounter becomes tense. In this situation, in de-escalating, try to address them at high level. Mo Kennedy of the National Association of School Resource Officers teaches the course. He says that the most important part of the training is community-based policing and building relationships with students. We want officers to know more about mental health issues that, that, that students may be dealing with in the school environment. Um, not that they have to know everything about it, but to be able to work more effectively with them. Kennedy says that officers can be better prepared to help when they have a better understanding of adolescent brain development and mental health issues. We provide them additional training and then they'll be able to go back to their schools and again just be more effective in their role as a school resource officer on those campuses. Representative Hernandez hopes the training will change the way officers handle situations with students. I think once they take a training and, and know about other ways they can help defuse the situation or, you know, make it so that it doesn't elevate to the next level. In Phoenix, Peter Gon, Cronkite News. Hernandez is currently working on a bill to make de-escalation training mandatory for school resource officers. Coming up next on Cronkite News at 5, cell phone use linked to teen depression and other mental health issues. We'll explain how and tell them what you can do to better protect your teenager. And Surprise has declared itself a dementia-friendly city. What that means and the impact it's already having on those who live there after the break. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. 
We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people to see those kids drink clean water for the first time. It's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. For the first time, a new study shows a direct link between cell phone use and mental health issues in teenagers. According to the journal Child Development, using cell phones at night makes teens more likely to battle depression and anxiety. It can also lower their self-esteem. Experts say kids between 9 and 18 years old need 8 to 12 hours of sleep per night. And screen time before bed can hurt the quality of sleep they get. One tip for parents is to have a central charging station for the family's phones that keeps all devices out of the reach for teens during the overnight hours. The 2011 Arizona Alzheimer's State Plan is a collaborative strategy to address the growing human and financial cost of dementia in Arizona. As Daria Yasmin reports, the goal was to bring stakeholders together to create a plan because the number of Arizonans with Alzheimer's disease is increasing. There are around 140,000 people 65 years and older who have Alzheimer's disease in Arizona. Tempe started the first dementia-friendly city initiative in the state in 2016. Surprise is the second one as of September of this year. Outreach program manager Janice Greeno from Banner Sun Health Research Institute says that they see patients on a daily basis. The Family Community Services Program offers education, support groups, and a variety of classes for those with ties to dementia and those without. If you have memory loss that impacts your daily life and you're having to have other people help you remember things that once were just easy parts of your daily life, that's something that you should be concerned about. Banner Health's Family and Community Services partnered with Benavia, Salvation Army and Sun City for this initiative. Seth Dyson is the Director of Human Service and Community Vitality in Surprise. He says memory cafes are a huge part of their initiative. To provide um, fun group support for folks that are experiencing dementia and then their caregivers can go off into another room and learn about support and other resources. To become a dementia-friendly city, Greeno says you have to come together, evaluate opportunities and get educated about the community. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in 2014, there were an estimated 5 million adults age 65 and older with dementia in the U.S. It is projected to hit nearly 14 million by 2060. The CDC says that age, family history, race, poor heart health, and traumatic brain injury increases one's risk of developing dementia. Greeno says this isn't just an individual's disease. It's a family's disease. In surprise, Daria Yasmin, Cronkite News. 
Physical exams, blood tests, and brain scans like a CT or MRI are some ways doctors can find underlying causes of dementia. Now you may have noticed a chill in the air and you aren't alone. People all over the valley have been bundling up and tweeting about it. Here's one of our favorite tweets from meteorologist Ian Schwartz, who wrote, My dog when I tried to take her outside this morning, chilly. We'll talk more about how cold is how cold is too cold when Cronkite News returns. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people to see those kids drink clean water for the first time. It's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental Covering Sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. Right now, the Grand Canyon is accepting applications in a highly competitive lottery for non-commercial rafting trips on the Colorado River. The National Park Service says only 462 permits are available for launch dates in 2021, and several thousand people are expected to apply. You must be 18 years or older. The trips last anywhere from 12 to 25 days. The park opens the lottery in February each year and holds additional draws for trips that are canceled or left over after the February 25th deadline. Battling the cold, Arizonans around the valley are feeling the freeze today as temperatures dip down into the 30s this morning. But while many people bundled up, for others it was business as usual. So that got us wondering, what temperature do you consider too cold for the desert? Is it 70 degrees, 60 to 70, 50 to 60, or below 50 degrees? Right now, the majority of you say below 50. It's not too late to join the conversation. Just head to our Cronkite News Twitter feed to vote in our live interactive poll. Now, Stephanie, I don't know about you, but it was a little too chilly for me this morning. We got Stephanie Bates here in studio to tell us more about it. Yes, yeah, very chilly this morning. It's going to be an even chillier night, but we're going to warm up heading into Friday. Let me tell you all what I'm talking about. Right now, we are sitting at 51 degrees here in downtown Phoenix. Sunny skies with a few clouds, but as the night goes on, we're going to get pretty chilly. When that sun drops, temperatures are going to drop right with it. 
We're going to be in those mid 40s by 8 and 9 o'clock this evening and lows are going to get even chillier as we centralize in on the valley down in the southeast region of the valley. Temperatures are going to drop below freezing here in Phoenix. We're going to be pretty cold as well at 36 degrees. Now when I say freezing, I mean freezing. As you can see, freeze alerts are in effect for the whole state of Arizona heading into 9 a.m. tomorrow here in Phoenix. It will be a freeze warning stretching down to Gila Bend. We've got a hard freeze down in Tucson, also up in the northwest part of the state in Kingman. Now looking ahead at the next three days, we're going to have a warm up topping out at 68 degrees by Friday. And as our weekend rolls through, we're going to make our way back to those mid 70s. Stay tuned into Cronkite News all week. We're going to keep you updated with your storm chances heading into Sunday, Monday and next Tuesday. Hundreds headed to Scottsdale this past weekend to enjoy at the to enjoy a day at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Up next, we'll tell you about a celebrity guest who showed up with a special connection to the Pro-Am. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. Here at Cronkite News, we have producers who craft shows that make an impact on our community. Our broadcasts allow students to be involved in all levels of production, from producing to directing. We are guided by highly respected professionals who mentor the journalists of tomorrow. From technical directing to teleprompting and beyond, our production crew works tirelessly to produce meaningful and award-winning shows. We are Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. Cronkite Noticias is the Spanish-speaking division of Cronkite News, covering topics such as economics, education, sustainability, immigration, and border relations. Cronkite Noticias strives to serve the Spanish-speaking community in Arizona. Under the guidance of prominent Spanish-speaking professionals, students at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism develop content for our broadcast partner, Univision, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Explore Cronkite Noticias at cronkitenoticias.azpbs.org. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS PBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. Phoenix is a home for many talented athletes, musicians, and well-known celebrities. One country music star whose roots run deep with Phoenix, Dirk Spentley. Cronkite News reporter Kirsten Corns caught up with the country star at Waste Management Phoenix Pro-Am. This year's 2020 Waste Management Phoenix Open brought thousands of guests from all over the country. One guest in attendance who not only is a native to the Valley, but holds the Thunderbirds close to his heart, Dirk Spentley. It's just always an honor to be invited to, to come do the, uh, the gig, and then I somehow get roped into doing the, the golf part, which I'm not much of a golfer. Growing up in Phoenix in a non-musical family, Bentley picked up a guitar in his teens before making it big in Nashville. But his Arizona roots and connection to the Waste Management Phoenix Open run deep. 
His late father, Leon, was a member of the nonprofit group behind the Phoenix Open. Dad was a Thunderbird. He loved the organization, loved the guys, loved the, the hang. Uh, of course, you know, raised a bunch of money for great causes around the Valley. You know, he was just a, a really, um, like I think like we all are, he's involved in the community uh, and, and cared about, you know, something uh, bigger than himself. And, and, uh, and so, you know, every Thunderbird, um, you know, regardless of what your job is and kind of what your career as a Thunderbird is, um, at the end of the day, we share that same um, core value. Dirk said he tries to come back to the tournament that has meant so much to him and his family every couple of years. Last week, he played in the Pro-Am and then performed to a sell-out crowd at the Coors Light Bird's Nest. You know, the Bird's Nest is such a fun room. There's no other place like it. You know, it's such a unique environment. A lot of happy people and it's just awesome tent. Friends with, you know, a lot of Thunderbirds um, and we all love him to death and we couldn't be more excited to have him back. Um, he feels like it's just like he's one of us. The Thunderbirds said they raised a record-breaking $14 million this year for local charities. As for Dirk Spintley, he and his band hit the road and continue his 2020 tour starting February 14th in Las Vegas. In the studio, Kirsten Corns, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon. On the next Arizona Horizon, a study shows that concerns about electric cars can be alleviated by owning one. And at 10 o'clock, we're live with analysis of the President's State of the Union Address. It's on the next Arizona Horizon. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.